Hello and welcome to Fort Collins Before. In this video series, we're going to talk about the history of Fort Collins. My name is Kurt Canaram, and throughout this series, I'll be taking you through some interesting places in and around Fort Collins that show you the history of our wonderful city. For our first episode, we're here at the Kaplan Hoover Bison Kill Site. You see it right above me. Let's go inside and take a look. The bones of the bison that you see here are over 3,000 years old. The people that killed these bison are the ancestors of the Plains Indians that you are probably familiar with. In this episode of Fort Collins Before, we're going to talk about not only these people, but people that came even before the people that killed these bison. So let's join our hosts, Ron and Trelore, as they take us to Fort Collins Before. Our story today begins with the first people to live in Colorado, the Folsom people. Now the time frame for this is 11,000 years ago. It's really hard to imagine that length of time. So I like it when people close their eyes. And you can imagine being in the foothills here in Colorado, except that the plants around you and the animals around you and the climate, the temperature around you is different than it would be today. 11,000 years ago, Colorado was in an ice age, so we had great sheets of ice covering parts of our world. The temperature was much colder, there was much more water, and because of all of this water, the plants that lived at this time grew larger as well. The animals that fed off those plants were really big. So we have the Folsom people living on these foothills surrounded by these tall grasses, the water, the cold, and the giant animals. We like to call them a Latin word, megafauna, but mega means big and fauna means animals. It's these big animals living on the landscape. And that's what the Folsom people hunted in order to make their living, these giant animals. The most important of the megafauna, the big animal, was the buffalo, and we do have a buffalo rug out here today. You can get a sense of the size of a buffalo that the Folsom people hunted back then. Um, you can imagine, though, that they didn't have guns to hunt these giant animals. Instead, they had stone tools. And the way we know about the Folsom people and how they hunted the buffalo is because of this stone tool. It goes on the end of a spear. It's called a projectile point. Projectile is when you throw something through the air. So this is the point they put on the end of their wood spear to throw at the megafauna buffalo, the big animal. Um, they were made it out of stone. Were these buffalo like the buffalo that people see today? They are like the buffalo of today, just even bigger. Um, they have horns on their heads like the buffalo today, but the tip of one horn to the tip of the other was about six feet across. So if you think of, um, say, your father at home, being not quite six feet tall. Imagine him laying out on the ground and from his head to his feet, that's how wide the horns of this buffalo were. So this is a big animal. And you can imagine that the Folsom people who depended on this animal for the food to eat and the fur and the skin for warmth, didn't want to get that close to the animal when they were hunting it. They didn't want to come right up close to the buffalo's giant six foot across horns. So instead they use a spear and a spear thrower for hunting the buffalo. Now we do have a long spear, it's made of wood, it's very straight, and at the end of this spear, the hunter would attach their fulsome point, their stone projectile point, using a piece of sinew. And we do have a piece of sinew here. Sinew means muscle. When the Folsom people hunted the buffalo, they would take strips of the muscle out of the animal, chew it up to make it soft, which I know sounds kind of gross, <laughs> but they'd take the sinew, wrap it around their point, and attach it to their spear. This way they could throw the spear at that giant buffalo and not have to get too close to his very big horns. It's a way to keep themselves safe. Now the Folsom people left some things behind on the land where they lived. And it's studying these things that help us understand the Folsom people. They didn't leave us books. We don't have any drawings that they left or any uh, letters that they wrote to people. Instead, we have to learn about them through the things they left behind. The only problem is that over 11,000 years, these things they left behind got covered up by dirt. 
It actually takes a special person called an archaeologist to dig down through these layers of dirt and find the things the Folsom people left. So the special person, the archaeologist, comes in to dig down through those layers of dirt and he finds the objects the Folsom people dropped, left behind, 11,000 years ago. The place where the Folsom people lived here is called Lindenmeyer. And I know archaeologists had to dig down through about 20 feet of dirt in some places to find the things that belong to Folsom people. So you can imagine that's a lot of digging to find these objects. But there are some neat things that the archaeologists found. And if we use our imaginations, we can get an idea of what life was like for the Folsom people 11,000 years ago hunting these giant buffalo. One thing that the archaeologists found were needles made out of bone. And I have just the end of a needle here. It's so small I have to keep it in a glass jar. And in this needle, we can see the tiny little hole that the thread would go into. This needle would be about the same size as a needle we would use today, but made out of steel. So thinking about this tiny needle and the tiny bit of sinew they probably used to put through the eye of this needle, we can imagine the types of clothes the Folsom people might have made for themselves. So they actually sewed with, with the sinew? With with this here, this is the sinew? With the sinew or possibly with pieces of plant material, um, what we call plant fiber. This is bark from a tree. This is a piece of plant that's called yucca. You see this just growing on the landscape. You can chew it to make it really soft and then pull strips of, strips of the yucca off and use that for sewing. Now with this tiny little needle, you can think of the tiny little stitches the Folsom people could make to sew their clothes. I like to ask if anybody around us is wearing clothes that are sewn. Now it doesn't matter if it's by a person or by a machine, everybody wears clothes that are sewn. So it's nice to think that the Folsom people 11,000 years ago were sewing their clothes just like we would sew clothes today, using needles and, and making those stitches, putting together clothes to keep them warm and dry. You mentioned the Lindenmeyer. Mm -hmm. What is Lindenmeyer? Well, that's the place here in Colorado where the Folsom people lived. It's a little bit north of Fort Collins. It's where the foothills meet the plains. Lindenmeyer is up on the foothills. So the Folsom people lived there during the year and they could look out over the plains and see the giant megafauna, or those big animals that were living on the plains. This way you could spot a herd of buffalo from your home, Lindenmeyer, go out onto the plains, hunt them with your spear. Remember, you don't have to get close to them if you have a spear. You can avoid those big six foot across horns and hunt your buffalo for your food. Of course, you eat the meat uh, for the skin and the fur for your clothes. And sometimes the Folsom people used bones to make tools. Uh, one thing they used out of bone, in addition to the needles, which were made of bone, were little beads. It's fun to think that some of us still wear beads today. They might be made of uh, stone. They might be plastic and colored bright red or green. But the Folsom people like to wear beads, too. I don't know if they wore them as necklaces. I don't know if they wore them in their hair. I don't know if they sewed them onto their clothes, but they did have beads mm -hmm. made out of bone. No, Lindenmeyer wasn't the only place they lived, right? No, in fact, all over the United States are places where the Folsom people lived. The archeologists think that the Folsom people followed the buffalo around the land. And so they had many different camping spots they would live at while they were following the buffalo. They also needed to pick up stones um, from the different places where they lived so they could make their tools. These are some types of stones that the Folsom people used. Some are called obsidian, these two. It looks Very like shiny. glass. In fact, it is glass, but instead of being made by a person, it's made by a volcano. Um, so volcanoes can make glass. We call it obsidian, and it's... Yes. Very, yeah. very sharp. So it's a black kind, and then this is also obsidian, but in a different color. Right, it's red. Um, it gets its red color from iron. So rocks that have iron in them have a reddish color. So they found all kinds of stone tools? Stone tools and, and bone tools. Well, one of my favorite things they found was 
ochre. This is a rock and you can see it has that red color in it and if you recall from talking about the obsidian, the red color comes from rusted iron. Ochre is a pretty special rock. You can grind it up into a powder. You can see I'm already getting some of the powder on my own fingers. Ochre is waterproof and if you recall the Folsom people living 11,000 years ago lived when it was very wet here in Colorado. So it's possible that they were taking pieces of ochre and rubbing them over their clothing, leaving this red ochre on their clothes to waterproof it. Now today, people still use ochre. Women who wear makeup are actually just putting rocks on their faces because ochre is put into makeup. We think the Folsom people may have done the same thing. They may have decorated their skin with ochre to give them coloring. We don't know what it would have looked like. We don't know the designs, but they were probably using ochre as well. So is the Lindenmeyer site considered a really important find? It's one of the most important archeological sites or places where people dig through dirt <laughs> to find things um, in the whole world. It's the largest site in North America in terms of how big it is but also the largest site because of the number of things that were found. The Folsom people probably lived there over a hundred years. And over a hundred years, different families living there, dropping tools, losing things there at the site, left thousands and thousands of tools and pieces of bone for us to find as the archeologists de uh, would dig down through the dirt. So thousands of things for us to use and think about, use our imagination as to what they might have been used for by the Folsom people. I know people often think of archaeology as finding human skeletons. Did they find any of those there? No, no human skeletons there. It's very likely that the Folsom people buried dead members of their group in other locations. Um, we also don't know the type of homes that the Folsom people lived in. So we don't have their bones and we don't know what their homes were like. They did not have teepees like later Plains tribes did, but they may have made small huts out of buffalo ribs and buffalo skin. Remember these buffalo are giant buffalo, megafauna, and the ribs could be many feet long. And so the Folsom people may have stuck those ribs down into the ground and then laid a piece of bison skin over them to make their homes. Um, another thing that we have to use our imaginations about, just like what the Folsom people may have looked like because we don't have any bones that belong to them. But we like to think that the Folsom people are grandparents to the Plains tribes that did use teepees. These people that lived on the Plains um, a couple of thousand years after the Folsom people also hunted buffalo. They were just a little bit smaller. They also used a different style of point. So the projectile point that the Folsom people used, this is the shape of the point used by just the Folsom people. The later people used a different shape point. Uh, we call them the archaic people, but they also hunted buffalo um, using a different style of point. Um, and they hunted the buffalo a little bit differently than the Folsom people did. Uh, they liked to herd the buffalo over the sides of cliffs. We call those buffalo jumps. And there's a very famous buffalo jump that's right near us here in Fort Collins that we call the Kaplan Hoover site. It's actually near Windsor, Colorado, just about 10 minutes away. Is this a place that people can go see? Yes, it is. Um, professors from CSU are excavating there. And in May, generally, they open up the site for the public to come out and see the buffalo bones that they're digging out from the dirt and to see the stone points, those projectile points that the archaic people used to hunt the buffalo. It's amazing to think how many animals the people were able to hunt and utilize the meat and the skin from. Interesting um, subject. Yes. As we have just seen, some of the earliest peoples of northern Colorado were the Folsom people. Now the Folsom people relied on the environment around them to live. One of the things that they relied on the most were the bison, as you see behind me. They relied on the bison for food, clothing, and shelter. 
In our next episode, we are going to look at the descendants of the Folsom people, the Plains Indians, and see how they relied on the bison as well. So join us next time for another episode of Fort Collins Before. Welcome to this, the second episode of Fort Collins Before. In the middle of the 1800s, teepees like this one would have been a common sight in what is today Fort Collins. What I have here is the woolly skin of a bison or buffalo. Now as you recall from the last episode, we saw that the early peoples in the area that would become Fort Collins used this skin and the rest of the buffalo for their food, clothing, and shelter.